Hi, I'm Parni Chagi and welcome to the second video on Virginia Woolf's essay, Professions for Women. We talked about Virginia Woolf as to how she became a popular and a pioneering woman novelist because of her technique of stream of consciousness and because of her feministic works. Now, we know that she is considered as one of the more important modernist uh, 20th century authors and also a pioneer who for the first time used the stream of technique, uh, stream of consciousness technique very successfully in her novels. Now, when we take up this essay, Professions for Women, this is uh, actually a part of the speech that Virginia Woolf gave in 1931 for the National Society for Women's Service, Women's Service League. And it was published in the volume, The Death of the Moth and Other Essays Posthumously, that is, after her death. And uh, if we briefly look at what the essay is about, it actually addresses women who wish to work in the professional fields and how or why it is so difficult for the women to work so because the fields are predominantly male. Now, this is about the time in 1931, when it was still male-oriented, the careers and professions were uh, chiefly for the male society. It was male-dominated. So she found a great difficulty in settling herself as an author. And she kind of related this pain and suffering and predicament with all the women of the world. And so this essay is kind of dedicated to those women who want to enter some career or profession, but they find difficult. So in the essay, we'll briefly look into what all she wants to say in the essay, not going into the detailed text. So she feels that women in all professions face the same kind of difficulties. Because uh, those women who start new courses or new lines or path of professions, they face greater obstacles than the rest of the women. Because moving out of their households and walking on the new lines is more than a challenge. So here Virginia Woolf shows how it is difficult for women to come out of that age-old prejudice that prevail in this society and also within the women themselves. Now, while writing the review, she discovers that if she were going to review books, she has to fight with a certain phantom. Now, many of the actual barriers preventing women from becoming successful professionals had been removed by the time Wolf was making her speech. But she still emphasizes that there are important invisible and internalized obstacles which still need to be surmounted, crossed. And this is what she calls a phantom. And this phantom is called the angel in the house in this essay. Now, what is this phantom or angel in the house? This angel in the house stands for the womanly perfection of the so-called good nurtured social identity. As we see, whenever she herself begins to write, this angel of the house comes between her and her paper and in desperation, in restlessness, in utter restlessness, she kills this angel in the house. She feels that it is far harder to kill a phantom than a reality. So she has to kind of fight with her own uh, skills, her own goals of perfection. So she herself is a competitor to her own self. And by and by, after lots of struggle with her own inner phantom, she rids herself of the angel in the house. Now, being a professional writer, Wolf goes beyond the limits which have been allotted to women. She cannot just remain nice and modest. Now, because she is moving out of her domain of a woman, as a domesticated woman, she has to be bold, she has to be forthright, and she has to be open in her descriptions as well as criticism. So next she says, she shares a strange experience in writing novels. 
See, she started her career with writing reviews and short write-ups. But once she started writing novels, she felt that a novelist's chief desire is to be as unconscious as possible. And she has to induce in herself a state of continuous lethargy so that nothing breaks or disturbs the illusion in which she is living. Now, what does she mean by this? When she tries to become a novelist, she says with becoming a novelist, one's chief desire, you want to be unconscious, you want to be in a lethargy, laziness, you want to stay in a world of illusion in which you do not want to be disturbed because you have your own world of your fiction and novel. So she imagines herself to be a girl sitting with a pen in her hand for minutes and for hours without even dipping it in the ink pot. So the image that uh, comes to her mind is the image of a fisherman lying sunk in dreams by the side of a deep lake with a rod held out over the water. So she uh, kind of let her imagination sweep unchecked and this line raced through her fingers. And she is kind, she's kind of in a dreamy state. And in this state, she, the state is very acute. And the state is a state of difficult distress because she is broken from the reality. She had thought of something about the body, about the passions, which she found it difficult to express as she thought men would be shocked. So she finds it difficult to write further. She could write no more. The trance was over and her imagination would work no longer. So these are the kind of problems she faces while she's writing a novel because the field, the profession and the world is largely male-dominated in her time. The next she felt that women writers were obstructed by the extreme conventionality of other sex. Now what does she mean by this? She means that women writers, there were very few women writers, but whoever wrote, they were obstructed, they were hindered, their path had an obstruction, they were not enjoying complete freedom due to the extreme conventionality of other sex. Because of the male conventions, because of the society which was male-dominated, there was hesitation, hindrance, obstruction for the female writers to write whatever they wanted to. Wolf acknowledges that some progress has been made in the field of economic independence, but a lot more has to be done before women become truly free in every sense of the word. So she says lots of things, lots of progressive advancements have been made in the field of economy, economic independence. But something more has to be done to make women truly, truly free. Now, for example, she says women still have to define their true selves. But it is not possible unless they are allowed to take part in all kinds of activities of the society, in arts, in professions and in different kinds of careers. So she in this essay is kind of calling for a collective action to the society to end a discrimination which is gender based, to break away from the stereotypes and to achieve true freedom. Next we see Wolf thus acquired two experiences in her professional life. The first is the killing the angel in the house and the second telling truth about her own experience as a body. Now, she has been successful in solving the first problem by killing the angel in the house. But she doesn't think that she had solved the second one. She also has doubts that any woman has been able to solve it as yet. Because the obstacles against women are still formidable and difficult to define uh, on an outward basis. Now, inwardly the case is different. She may feel something, but it is tough to express that in words in front of the world. So next she says that if there are so many impediments in literature, the freest of all professions for women, then there are more obstacles for women who for the first time enter in the new professions. 
So she says if writing and literature has so many impediments, so many hurdles and obstructions in expressing oneself, now this is supposed to be the freest of professions because you can sit down at home, not leave your household and still do your profession, still carry on. But she says if we think of other professions that there are many more obstacles for women who enter these professions for the first time. So she desires to discuss all these things because women in other professions too have the same obstacles though in different forms. So she is all sympathies with the women who want to pursue other professions also. It is not just an essay for the writers who like her want to write and express and earn something but it is also for the women following other professions or who are yearning or aspiring to follow other professions. Now to discuss and define them she says is of great value and importance because in this way the labor can be shared and the difficulties can be solved. So uh, we see that Virginia Woolf also thinks that the ends and aims for which they are fighting should be actually continuously discussed, questioned, examined in order to ensure greater freedom for women. So her voice is not only for herself as a writer but also for all other women who are aspiring or dreaming or trying to pursue different kinds of professions in life. Thank you for now.